Once the public caught on to Trump's games, Trump bashing became a popular sport. But right up to the moment his infidelities were revealed, he could do no wrong. He's very sexy, very handsome, very powerful. He cares about America, he cares about New York City, and he's doing something trying to help New York City. Some thought he should run for president. So Trump considered it. Supposedly our allies, and I say supposedly. Would you really like to, to if, take over and run and run the country as you have run your I would organization? Much, I would much prefer that somebody else do it. I just don't know if the somebody else is there. I don't know if we have the kind of advocate that you need. We need major surgery. This country needs major Are surgery. Are you the surgeon? I think I do a fantastic job. He doesn't give a good rat's hoot about poor people who might be living on sidewalks outside his building. He talks a good game, but he lacks character. Those who have worked closely with Trump have seen a more personal side of this most public man. He has a loner quality. Uh, there's no question about it. And there, for all the sense of Donald Trump as someone who's out and around all the time, there are dozens, if not hundreds, of times that I have spoken to him at 9.30 or 10.30 or 8 o'clock at night uh, on a weekday when the only thing between me and him interfering is the remote control change or changing the channels. He presents himself marvelously, but the Donald Trump that I saw in real life was very different from the Donald that I saw on TV or on some sort of video or, or a talk show or something. And that fascinated me, and that's when I realized how much a performance it was. He can be extremely articulate and very well-mannered, and he has this marvelous sort of boyishness that projects, I think, rather successfully on camera. In person, you see a hostility and an and, and anger. I've known him to say after a meeting where he'll freak out and scream at people that he'll walk out and say, some performance, wasn't it? Um, but a lot of times it's not a performance, and he'll claim it is, because then it, again, it maintains his image that he's always in control. But he's often out of control. He treats people, I've seen people treated horribly, including his own family, by him. Oh, extraordinary verbal assaults. He doesn't define himself from within. He doesn't define himself through uh, relationships or through some sp spiritual uh, interests and concerns. He does not have uh, close friends outside of his family. But I don't think, and he himself has said, that friendship in the way that other people uh, might think it's important is as high a priority for him. You expect employees to speak well of the boss, but some of Trump's associates seem to genuinely love him. One in particular was this man, John Beninov, vice president of Trump Plaza Hotel and Casino. We have a great leader in Mr. Trump and in Mr. Hyde, and they care about their people, and that's the difference at Trump Plaza. They truly care about their employees. We don't like to overwork. Four months after this interview, Beninov, Stephen Hyde, and Mark Edis, another key Atlantic City executive, were killed in a helicopter accident. A stunned Trump publicly mourned their loss. Nine months later, in an interview in the New York Times, Trump attacked the three dead men, blaming many of his financial problems in Atlantic City on their mismanagement. The comments enraged some Trump employees. Trump later denied he made the criticism, but the reporter who wrote the story told us Trump couldn't have been more explicit. When you work for Trump, you know you're working for the best. There's, I think it's human nature. When people say, where do you work? When you're working for the number one place, there's a lot of pride behind that.